So what is the difference between red teaming and pen testing? Now, this is a question that I've gotten on my channel a few times. And when I first started out, I honestly, I didn't know. I had a friend that was a red teamer and uh, I myself uh, was uh, a pen tester and I didn't really know what the differences were, if any. And uh, I just want to break that down here because when you're getting into the field, I mean, there's tons of different security positions and that's what I really want to hammer home with this video. Uh, because when you tell someone you want to be in security, that's, that's way too broad, right? That's like saying, I want to be an engineer. Well, what kind of engineer do you want to be? Or I want to be a doctor. What kind of doctor, right? It's kind of like that with security. If you say, I want to be in cybersecurity. Okay, well, what area of cybersecurity? And even within the offensive side, these are two different roles, as you'll see here, uh, if you stay tuned to this video. So what's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Let's crack into this uh, topic here. Now, when it comes to these roles, right, uh, the first thing I want to preface with is it's, these, are, these are terms that I'm using, right? Pen tester, red teamer. Not all companies might, uh, some, depending on the company you work for, not all of them use this terminology is basically what I'm trying to say, right? Some people, you know, when you read through job descriptions, you might hear very generic uh, names out there sometimes like you might hear security engineer or cyber engineer or trying to think of what other ones i've heard uh information security specialist and things like that very generic terms for hr but normally even if you have a formal title that is that or something like that right within your organization they often make a distinction between a hey, this is the red team here and these are our pen testers right so don't be too fooled by, by the job descriptions, uh, what they say when you go to apply for the job. You have to read into the fine details of the job application itself. So normally when you read about um, the job description, that will give you a really good indication of which role you're applying for, right? They start talking about social engineering. They start talking about, um, you know, Persi like lateral movement and things like that, right? That is a red team role, okay? And on the other hand, if they start talking about, you know, if, if those terms are left out, then most of the time you're dealing with a pen tester role. So the goal for both of these positions, and for the sake of simplicity in this video, I'm going to say red team to refer to, you know, the guys who do the social engineering and things like that, and I'm going to use pen testing to refer to the other group, right? So when it comes to these different roles, right? They both share the same goal of strengthening the security of an organization. They're both on the offensive side. So they both, their end goal is to make the security of an organization stronger. Okay. So they are unified in that goal and they fall under the same, you know, the same area within a security organization as well, okay? But the main distinction between these two is that the red team, they look for flaws in processes of security processes, whereas pen testers look for flaws in the technologies or the implementations of the technologies. Now, I know it's a lot of technical jargon, right? So what does that really mean? Okay, well, let's start with Pentester, right? You might be more familiar with that if, uh, you know, that's what I talk about most on this channel because that's personally what I do. I, I'm not a red teamer. I am a pen tester. So when I talk about looking for flaws in the technology or the implementation of the technology, what I mean is you know, the software that is running. Is there any vulnerabilities in the software, right? Can I pull off any exploits on the technology, right? If you think of OSCP, if you're familiar at all with the OSCP, and if you're not, that's fine. Uh, or CTFs for that matter. If you've ever done a CTF or seen anyone do it, right? You're normally looking for, um, it's more nor, normally more geared toward the pen tester, if you will, where you're, you know, you're doing some recon and then enumeration on the software that's running and the specific version of it. And oh, okay, that's vulnerable to this exploit. You pop off the exploit, you get a shell, right? 
that is more of like a pen tester thing to do. Now, a red teamer, he probably wouldn't even go that route. He would probably do some kind of social engineering after doing recon on the organization and the people that work there to find out how he could craft that perfect email or maybe do a USB drop or something like that to get that initial access and that shell on the system, you know, fire up his, uh, maybe an, a, load an agent into memory to connect to his C2 and then make lateral moves from there. I know it's a ton of jargon, tons of jargon there, but for the guys that did understand what I'm saying, that's one thing, that, that's one way they would definitely differ. Now, to put it in more layman's terms, where even you new guys will be able to understand is that we're focused on technology as pen testers, right? So the CTFs and things that you've seen out there, if you've ever done Hack the Box, or if you ever, you know, watch content even on my channel, all the content that I've made for the most part, other than maybe the Bloodhound stuff, well, even that, right? Even the Bloodhound stuff, right? You're kind of exploiting technology, right? You're exploiting AD, misconfigurations in the Active Directory. So that is the next part, right? We might not necessarily, as pen testers, we might not necessarily be exploiting a flaw in the technology itself, but rather how the admins configured that technology, right? So one example of that is, again, if you've watched my content or done CTFs, you might know that sometimes you're able to log into web portals as the admin account because the you were able to brute force the password to the admin account. You know, they didn't have a good enough password or maybe they had anonymous FTP, right? Now, FTP in and of itself is not super insecure. Well, you could maybe argue that it is because FTP is not encrypted, right? But, you know, these passwords, right? How, you know, using the technology, using Tomcat wasn't the vulnerability, but the fact that you had a default credential or an easy to guess credential as the password to the admin account, that's the vulnerability. Now that is something that, you know, you're not gonna call up uh, the the uh, vendor of Tomcat and say that uh, they have a security fall and put in a CVE. No, that was, that was a mistake made by the admins, right? So that's also in scope for a pen tester. Now, let's jump over to the red team side, okay? They can use pretty much any means necessary if they do, want to get in this way and they see an easy opportunity to exploit a flaw in the technology to get in, then by all means, I think a lot of times they will. But the easier option and what they're really there to do is to test the processes. So they're going to use social engineering and actually try to exploit people rather than the technologies. They're testing the process, you see. That's the difference. So what do I mean by testing the process? of a security organization? Well, by that, what I mean is that they are gonna get that initial shell, right? And once they get it, they are going to see what kind of things they can do on the network without being detected, right? They're gonna go as far as they can. A lot of times as pen testers, especially if you're working for, uh, you're working in the corporate world for this stuff, you're not gonna get shells too often, if ever. and what is in scope for you to do at the point that you get that get it is very limited if anything at all right with red team they're getting shells all the time because they're using social engineering and things like that and their part of their job is to be in there inside the network inside the servers and deploy their command and control framework which is basically a way for them to remotely control and manage their shells that they have right and they're going to test what can they get away with once they're already in, right? A lot of companies have what is called a assume breach mentality. And basically what that means is they're gonna act as if they're already breached and they're gonna make sure that they have security in place in multiple layers. So they're gonna assume, okay, we have sites out there on the internet. Let's just assume those sites are already compromised and adjust our security to account for that. So we need to make sure that even if someone hacks in, that it's going to be very limited what they're able to do and how they're able to pivot, right? Because a lot of times these big hacks you hear about, they start out with something really small. Maybe it's a point of sale system. Maybe it's a website that gets hacked. And from there, the attacker is able to make lateral movements or, you know, privilege escalation and things within the network, 
through various means, right? And so that's one of the reasons the red team is there. They need to test uh, what they can do once they do get in. And um, there's a blue team, right? That's on the defensive side, and they're trying to detect the red teamers. Also, a lot of times red team does what they call purple team engagements where they're working directly with the defensive uh, blue team, and they're actually you know, in close contact with them and saying, hey, we did this. Did you detect this? No, we didn't. Oh, okay, well, this is how we did it. Okay, yeah, now we adjusted our stuff. We detect it now. And they're working really in tandem with each other. That's called like purple team exercises, something you might have heard if you're in the industry. But as pen testers, we normally don't deal with any of that. We're just testing the technology and things like that uh, consistently. Now, I personally prefer, highly prefer web app pen testing. What I do is I, uh, I do some network pen testing as well, but web app is amazing because, and especially in 2021, because you'll always be able to work from home. The issue with red team, in my opinion, if you're like me and you don't want to work in an office ever again, right? I'm never going to work in an office again because I just don't like uh, having to waste time commuting and stuff. I'm so much more efficient. I can learn so much more every day because I have more time to, uh, to work, right? Uh, so much less uh, wasted time. But if you are on a red team, chances are, now I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule out there, but chances are you're going to have to go to a physical location to test some of this stuff because a lot of red teams, they actually do some physical pen testing as well where they're actually going in and using real life social engineering to get into a facility and you know maybe they're testing some hardware even A lot of times they're plugging in directly into the server room and things like that and seeing what can an attacker do if he's able to get uh, physical access into a facility and things like that. Or even Wi-Fi pen testing. Like, okay, what could someone on the Wi-Fi network do? And yeah, there's all these different cases like that. And there's just no way around it. If you're going to test something like that, you have to be physically there in order to perform a very thorough and sufficient uh, assessment, right? But as a web app pen tester, by the nature of web apps, they're always going to be accessible uh, online, right? Even if they're within an internal network, well, you just VPN onto the network and you can do it from anywhere, right? And that's the beauty of pen testing. And honestly, I had thought about Red Team many times before because let's be honest, it is cool. It sounds cool, right? You get to use social engineering. You get shells for days and you get to pivot around the networks and you got to be stealthy, right? You got to evade detection from antivirus, from the blue team who's trying to hunt you down, you know, security monitoring and all of that. You got to be that stealthy ninja hacker. That's And you have pretty much any means necessary, I mean, within reason, right? And that's really cool, right? That's really, really cool, but... Ultimately, when it comes down to it, having that freedom of working from home and still getting to test some really cool stuff with uh, the web app side and learning more about that security space, even do some uh, tests against the servers and things like that. I definitely love uh, pen testing, and that's where I see myself for a while, I would say. But uh, let me know what your opinions are on these down in the comments section below. And of course, if I missed anything, left anything out, That's what I see being the biggest difference between these two uh, areas. They are pretty similar. So the nice thing is if you are working in one of these areas and you want to go to the other one, it's not much of a leap to to do that really. Uh, You already have a lot of the, the core fundamentals of it is the same for the most part there. So you can make that movement a lot easier than someone that's just in general IT or maybe certainly outside of the space, right? So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well to help get the message out there and uh, keep the video requests coming. Uh, Many of you guys have asked me this question, so I wanted to address it. And uh, yeah, I think it was definitely uh, something that I would have wanted to know when I was starting out. So if you want to learn more about uh, the sort of beginner security stuff here, getting a a grasp on this space, I know it can be pretty confusing. Check out the uh, video playlist on screen now and I will see you guys over in the next video. Thanks for watching.